My name is Enrique Espinosa. This is video number two. We are learning how to program classes and objects in C Sharp. Objects are dynamic. What does that mean? It means that, say we have a representation of the computer's memory. This is RAM, random access memory. RAM is made up of cells. Cells are given an address. So these are make-believe. These are just for theoretical purposes of, on our explanation. But each cell has got an address. Now, remember we created a template. This template has attributes and behavior. Now this template information structure will reside in memory. So it will be stored, say, in cell 100. As it's stored, it can be used. This is C-sharp or Java or C++. First, we must write the name of the class. We want to create an instance of class musical instrument, which is the template we have just stored in memory. The name of the, me of the object we want to create will be MI1. This is an ID. I can name it any way I wish. So MI1 will be an instance of class musical instrument. What that means is that I'm about, uh, about to create a copy of the class into an object as we saw in the previous video. So, in order to create the instance, I have to reserve memory for that object. This reservation is done by operator new. New is a reserved keyword in C Sharp, in Java, C++. It allocates memory space for an object in RAM. The actual address of that memory space will be hidden from us. We don't care about it. If we program in C++ though, we will have to point to it. But that is hidden in both Java and C Sharp. So new will allocate memory space for us. How much space? Well, it depends on the size and the complexity of the template. So if this template is 15 bytes long, then new will allocate 15 bytes for us. If musical instrument, the template stored in cell 100, is 55 bytes long, then new will try to allocate another memory space with 55 bytes for storing object MI1. So as we go through this, the object is created and gets stored in memory. Now we can proceed to create another object. So the same procedure holds. We say, in the first place, what template we will use, that is, musical instrument. Next, we say the name of the object we want to create, in this case, MI2, a different object from the first. We will assign memory space once the new operator runs. We know that new will allocate memory space proportional to the number of bytes the template already holds. So as run, as new runs, a new object will be stored. Once again, what address holds which object, we don't need to worry about. All we need to worry about are the IDs, MI2 or MI1, for each one of the objects we just created. So now let's reproduce the same, but using C Sharp. So let's go back to the project we created in the previous video. So remember, just recall, we had class musical instrument with three attributes, name, type, and price, and three corresponding methods. Give me your name, give me your type, give me your price. And now we will create objects of these, this class. So C Sharp has created a class called Program. This class exists for the purpose of providing an entry point. An entry point will be the place the program starts running on, no matter what. Precisely, that will happen in method main. Method main is the entry point in a more precise fashion. So we can start writing in the body of method main. Remember, the, the body starts with opening round bracket, ends with a closing round bracket. So now we have class musical instrument. So recall the name, musical instrument. 
So what I can do now is just copy the name of the class and let's go back to the procedure we showed before. So the first thing we do is to look for the name of the class, which we already did. Next we provide a name for an object. Let's say MI1 once again. MI1. Next goes the equal sign to receive what the new operator will hold for us, that is memory space. So we'll say new. And C sharp provides us with the name of the musical instrument because it's part of the environment already. And the last part, which is syntax, will be to type opening and closing parentheses plus a semicolon. And this will be the equivalent of this. However, we said we were going to make two instances, right? So we'll just make a copy of the same instruction and change the name of the object itself. So I'll just copy this line and make a new one. And then we'll have two copies, two objects of the same class. This will reproduce this scenario. So in this scenario, we have reserved space for the template. And the template will be used to make copies or clones of itself. The clones will live in separate memory spaces from the template itself and amongst themselves. So let's run the program. The program still does nothing interesting, but it runs. Right? So let's play with it for a little while. Remember we have name, type, and price. So let's actually make the objects be different from themselves. So for example, I'll say string name equals piano. The type will be Yamaha. For those of you who are more knowledgeable in musical instruments, Yamaha might not be a very good choice, but please excuse. And the price will be $150,000. So here we go. Now I can just say MI1 and I want to send a message to this object. So I have three choices. Give me your name, give me your price, give me your type. So I'll say give me your name. Now this is a this is a method that returns a string so I must enclose it in something that produces output to the console. So I'll say console and right line And I close my parentheses, and I'm done with. I'll do the same for the other object, so I'll just change the name of the, uh, of the object, save, and run. Whenever I see errors here, I'll have to do something about it. Whenever I see this, I shouldn't run. I have to look inside the error box. The error box says, I cannot implicitly convert type string to float. The line is number 12, column 21. So I go back to the program and look for the offending line. And here we go. So 15,000 float. So I made a mistake. I'm trying to give a string to a floating point. So I take out the, the quotations and I must add the F suffix. So I try to run again and now I have the result two pianos. Both objects are pianos. We we'll still need to do something in order to have both objects have different types and names and we'll do that in a later video. For now we have reviewed how the new method creates memory space in order to store different objects in memory and we have done this in C-sharp as well. For now, that's it. Thanks for watching.